The West Indies were just too good for England in 1966, and they were generally regarded as the world champions in those middle 60s. But in 1967-68, England went into the Tour of the Caribbean in some disarray. Brian Close, who'd been successful as a captain, had offended many by delaying tactics in a match against Warwickshire for Yorkshire, and when he refused to apologise, MCC vetoed his captaincy. So Colin Cowdery, with little confidence from the selectors, led the side, and to the surprise of many, they held the upper hand in each of the first three tests, but couldn't press home the advantage. The fourth test in Trinidad seemed to be drifting towards another draw, when Gary Sobers sensationally declared, setting England 215 to win in 165 minutes. It was a chase that the England captain didn't particularly relish. I think in the match, West Indies scored 530 in very, very hot weather, and that weird us, and we sort of came back a bit. We made about 400. It was a very good wicket. But in that 400, of which I got quite a lot, I think I, was, I got 148. But suddenly, the, we were going well, and Rodriguez came on, who was a brilliant leg spinner and googly bowler and very dangerous, especially at Trinidad, because in Port of Spain, Trinidad, there was no sight screen at the pavilion end. And he was lethal. It wasn't just that he got three wickets in a hurry. He might have got 19 wickets in a hurry, because the way we, you know, we, we all struggled against him. I was lucky enough to be Ian, and I struggled less than the others. But the new batsman, I mean, it could have been a sort of under-11 match at prep school, you know, when you don't know what's happening. And Gary remembered this. And he reckoned that if, and if he could have another go at us in the second innings, and it looked as if he was unlikely to, we were so bad at it that you know, he could bowl us out for 10. I think he really did feel that. And on the last day, time was running out. We were eking out, we were dead tired. It was terribly, terribly hot, I can remember it. And uh, we got to lunchtime and realised there were only about four hours to go. And thought, oh gosh, we've escaped here and survived. And then we go to Guyana for the last match, which was a good wicket, we have a good match, start again. And we'd only been going about 20 minutes, and somebody on the field noticed, I think Robin Hobbs noticed, that um, the players who were all out on the front as we'd left had dashed inside, and there was going to be a decoration. And quite honestly, it was the last thing I wanted. Uh, I was more tired, perhaps, than I was being the captain, but uh, I, and I was fearful of this chap, Willie Rodriguez. And they left us 215 to get in two and three quarter hours which um, in club cricket is, is a good decoration. In test cricket, when you're bowling overs very slowly, that's a lot to get. And then you could speed up the overs a bit with the spinners going if they're on top. Colin Cardry, the century maker in the first innings, now coming in to see if he can perhaps increase the tempo a little bit. I was so weary, I thought it was a pretty tall order. And it did hinge on the start, really. And others were saying, come on, you know, was, I think the others were saying, we'll have a little doubt, if we have a chance, we'll get these, you know. Tom Graveney was particularly bullish. In fairness, the, the others were more, more optimistic than I was, but once we got a start, then it did start to look different. Unfortunately, I played well at a vital point. Gives to boycott on 49. That's his 50. Sobers fielding by the square leg umpire. 80 runs needed as Cowdery faces Gibbs. And he's hit that hard and high, and he's going down the long arm boundary. And it's four runs, well clear of all the fielders. England score 140 for one chasing a target of 215, which means they need 75 in 55 minutes. Sobers comes in, bows to Cowdery, and he's played that one down to fine leg, and it's four more runs. Four more runs to Cowdery. Sobers in, bows to Cowdery, and he's hit that through, and it's four runs. So England now need 47 runs for victory. Gibbs comes in, bows to Cowdery, and he's hit that high, and he's going to be out. That's the end of Colin Cowdery's magnificent innings. Port Sobers, bold Gibbs for 71. Gibbs comes in, bowls to boycott. And he's hit that high. And he's gone for four runs. 19 now for victory. Gibbs comes in, bowls to boycott. And he's cut that one down. It's four more runs. Nine runs for victory. In over even time, as Gibbs comes in, bowls to Dolabero, and he's inside edge. It has gone down to fine leg. And they're going to take two runs. Three runs needed now for victory. And it could well be that this is the last over of the day, of the match. And he's hit that to mid-wicket. They've taken one, and they're taking another one. Two runs. Gibbs comes in, bows to Dolivera, and he's played around the corner, and they're taking it. England have won. 
England won a memorable victory with probably two balls to go. It was an extraordinary match. And of course, having won, Gary Sobel was held up to be the, the stupidest captain of all time. You know what it is, if you, if you win, you're a champion. If you lose, you're an idiot. He was booed out of Air Force or someone and all that sort of thing. It was really wretched. But for us, it was, a, in a way, a lucky break. But we had deserved to be... We could have been two up early on. We should have won the first test. And um, we should have won the second test, actually. So we were morally up. And gradually, they were climbing back. England drew the fifth test, mainly due to the resilience of Alan Knott, who joined his captain when England were 41 for five before lunch on the final day and was still there at the end. England lost their ninth wicket with five minutes to go, and Jones had to survive a final over from Gibbs for England to become holders of the Wisdom Trophy for the first time. It's just one more ball to survive. The last ball of the match. The last ball of the match, Jeff Jones, seven fielders round his bat, Gibbs comes in, bowls it, and he plays it down in England to save the match. Surely there's not time for another over. It's dead on half past five by the clock, and they're taking them off. England have saved the match, and England have won this 1968 Test Series against the West Indies.